One of the amazing things about living in a four season climate is the fall season. It's full of vibrant colors. It's an incredible beauty. The temperature's nice and cool. The air is crisp and fresh. And it's a great time to be alive. Welcome to the Hidden Spring Farm. It's been really raining here in Ontario for, I don't know, three or four days now. <laughs> And it's raining so bad, everything's so wet, and we just had our two old English sheepdogs groomed. So they're not here at the farm today, so don't look for them, but I needed to film, so it is what it is. <laughs> farm life, right? Happy Thanksgiving to all our Canadian viewers. <laughs> this is the guest's truck staying here from England, and they flew in for one of a family member's wedding. So they're staying here for a week, and it's a really great booking. I'm happy about it. Yeah. This bunny barn and rabbitat is where our Californian rabbits live. Let's go inside. It's cold today though. My hands are cold. Six degrees Celsius it says. So six degrees Celsius is a little bit cold for the middle of October. It is Thanksgiving weekend in Canada. <laughs> Americans, you got your Thanksgiving, I don't know, a few weeks from now at least, right? Our Californian rabbits are doing extremely well and they are still getting a lot of greens that we had from our garden. Even though it is getting cold, they're still enjoying some of the abundance that we had growing this year. We are 90 acres here on the farm. We have 15 acres of hardwood bush. We have a 10 acre horse paddock. The neighbor keeps their horses in there. We have, I think it's about a two acre orchard and it's been really fun developing this farm so far. It's almost like it's storming out today, you know? We got a lot of wind. Hope it doesn't interfere with my impeccable audio. <laughs> I got the guard geese and the training ducks and the training chickens out in the chicken yard. It's their turn. They need to get some grass and whatnot. And honestly, waterfowl doesn't have any problem with the rain. Chickens, on the other hand, they don't care for the rain too much. They hide under the trees or they'll stay inside their coops. <laughs> this here is the Chateau du Poulet chicken house. It houses all of our chicken breeds. It houses our meat chickens. It's got seven coops. It's very easy to work around and collect the eggs. I built it myself, state of the art, I'd like to think. You can check out the playlist that I have if you want to watch all the 10 videos to do with the build, but you can do that after you watch this video. We have black leghorns in this coop. We have training white ducks in this coop. <laughs> we have a new flock of barred rock in this coop, and we have light Sussex in this coop, and these two coops right here, we have Rhode Island Reds. That's Elvis Presley right there. He's our black leghorn rooster. He takes care of his hens pretty good. He can be nasty sometimes. As you can see, he's getting closer. Look at him, he's getting tough. He's getting tough. Elvis, you get back in there. There's one Rhode Island Red that got stuck in here and she just became part of the flock and that's okay. This coop has the new ducks. We just hashed out these fellas. They're all yellow ducklings. They'll turn into white ducks and they're pretty cool. But there again, they're too small to have them living with the adult ducks. Here's the new barred rock flock. They're looking amazing. They're actually very beautiful birds with their black and white kind of spotted looking pattern. And it looks like we got a few hens and a couple of roos, so we'll have to figure out our two roos, which one we're going to keep. That's Michael Jackson right there. He's the leader of the light Sussex flock. This here is the chicken yard. We don't really have any chickens out here yet today because it's pouring rain. We do have 40 acres of hay on this property and we lease those 40 acres out to our neighbor. It's a perfect system. They take care of the hay, they cut the hay, they mix it all up, they bale it. They can give me a couple of bales if I want and they 
make money selling the bales. They keep some of them for their horses. This is a 10 acre field right here. There's a 20 acre field down there, another 10 acre field over there. As you can see, it's beautiful fall colors right now. It's quite vibrant and incredible and really nice to be outside if it wasn't for this rain. There's the two Rhode Islands that are almost big enough to join the Rhode Island flock. We got our two guard geese in training and we have a bunch of small ducks out here. The ducks are just not big enough yet to go in with the regular duck flock that live in the ducky bunky. Come with me and I'll show you where the ducks live. This here is the ducky bunky. It's an A-frame style. It was the first structure that I built here on the farm. The ducks have a 30 foot run on those days when I'm not free ranging them in the orchard. Every day during the non-snow months, we let the ducks and the geese out into the orchard and they are supposed to protect the orchard from insect infestations. The end of the duck run there is right beside our veggie garden and if ever I want to direct the ducks in there I can. Let's say we're having a slug, slug problem or something. Let's get these geese out so they'll shut up. Forgot to mention the goose caboose. This is where the guard geese live. <laughs> They're not happy with me right now. They're squawking because they think I'm intruding on their ducks. Look, they're coming over. They're gonna attack me. <laughs> I better get out of here. We don't want trouble. This is our orchard right here. This is where all the ducks and the geese hang out. We have five old kind of antique apple trees. You can still see some of the apples on there. So we're having a really good harvest this year. You can see on that one, there's still a lot of apples on that one. We also have a whole bunch of our own fruit trees that we've planted. I think altogether we have 40 trees now, and that's basically a combination of new apples, pears, plums, peaches, cherries, and we have a couple of chestnuts, and we have a few walnuts. <laughs> We're trying to get this into a permaculture style, and we got some honey locust trees, like this one's a honey locust. Honey locust is nice because it's a nitrogen fixing tree, so it adds nitrogen, so that's pretty cool. Sunflowers are pretty much dying off. I don't know if we'll get any seeds from it this year. It's getting pretty cold. They might not have enough time to dry out. Here's the garden. <laughs> state of the art. State of the art garden. It's 100 feet by 50 feet, something like that. Most everything's dying off now. All the tomatoes are gone. We didn't get any corn this year. We still have some peppers, believe it or not. We still have to harvest all these carrots. And we have some more peas here. We have some romaine lettuce. We still have some green beans. They're just starting to get their flowers now. Might be too late for those, I don't know. We've got a whole bunch of uh, tromboncino squash this year, so that was cool. And my wife has some bitter melon. You see this bitter melon here? Yeah, she loves to eat that bitter melon. Zucchini did very well this year. We still have some cabbages right there. We got some white radish right here still and all these leafy broccoli plants for the rabbits. This is not good. My camera's getting all wet. Filming in the rain is the worst. Sorry about that. This is the catio right here, and this is where the cats hang out on days like today when it's storming out. Hey, buddy. How are you? How are you, Dexter? You giving me hugs, bud? You good boy, huh? Good boy? Miss me, huh? Maggie! They have a little cat door that goes into the workshop and they can get warm in there and get out of the weather and hang Tango. out. Tango! Tango! Hi, Tango! They can climb up over there. They can go in and out, climb up over here. They have a hammock. They have a hammock over here. They have climbing apparatus logs. They have a catwalk all the way around here. And when they're trapped in here on stormy days like this, at least they can hang out and get some fresh air and get some exercise and play a little bit. You know, be cats. I keep all our barn cats locked up in the catio and cat house every night now, just to protect them from coyotes. We've lost four cats in total in the past three years. So it's a little too heartbreaking and ridiculous and I'm doing my best to try to prevent it. Doing, Dexter? Tango. Hi, Tango. Hi, Tango. Hi, Maggie. 
Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Hey, Junk. Junky, how are you, buddy? You okay? Hi, Mango. Hey, buddy. You okay, bud? You guys got to stay in there, okay? It's way too mucky today. As we walk down towards the barn, I want to show you the neighbor's horses. How you doing, bud? You okay? You okay? Come on, bud. You're okay, right? You're okay, right? You thirsty? Yeah, you're thirsty, eh? It's actually fun having the horses here because I've never had any experience with horses in my life, but they're pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know yet what I'm going to do with this kind of paddock here. That's for another animal in the future once we're a little bit more developed. I got the two pig stalls right here. I got to get the pigs out, but I just wanted to show you guys a project that I worked on last summer. See, that's still the chicken yard area. The chickens sometimes go way down there. That's where the compost is. But then just adjacent to it, we have this whole fenced area that I built. I built this at a cedar rails. It was an easy project actually, but you come through the gate here and we have four rows of blueberries. And we got a lot of blueberries this year, a lot. The season's finished now, but there's a good amount of growth that happened with these blueberries. So. Can you imagine having loads and loads of blueberries every year? That's amazing. I still haven't finished up the cement around this door, but I will get to it before the snow comes. Good boy. No, you can't come out today, bud. You got to stay in there. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me tell you, pigs are one animal that do not mind to get dirty. Wait, there's Uncle Rabbit. See Uncle Rabbit? Now the rabbit was living in that stall first. We separated the rabbit because he's a boy rabbit. So he's now living with Bobby, the mini pig. We moved Bobby in there because we thought Billy, the mini pig was pregnant and she was. Let's get some grass and weeds for the rabbit. This is clover, dandelion, all sorts of stuff in the garden here. And Rabbit loves this stuff. Here you go, Rabbit. Come and get it, bud. Not you, Bobby. That's for the rabbit. That's for the rabbit, bud. These geese are the offspring of the guard geese up in the orchard. We've been trying to sell them, but there's been no takers so far. It's been a tough season for people wanting animals. We may end up using them for meat. For those of you following along, we were keeping Mama Billy the mini pig in this area. We now put her back in with the piglets. So far, they're doing pretty well. I've noticed that they have not been bothering mama's teats at all. So I think they're pretty well weaned off of the milk. We had an incident in here yesterday with the water spigot there. The piglets broke off this water thing, you know, the nipples, and it made a big mess. There was water everywhere in there. Now it's all muck. I should have known that was gonna happen. It's not durable enough. I need a steel one. I'm coming in. Pigs. Some in there. 
some in here. Share, share. You guys want some? Bobby. Here you go, rabbit. You too, bud. Get some grub. Bobby, don't make a mess. We do have this 107 year old farmhouse. What we do is we rent it out on Airbnb as a farm stay and we give people farm type experiences while they're staying here. You know, dealing with the animals, cleaning up maybe, feeding them, petting them, collecting the eggs, that kind of thing. Especially kids, they really love that kind of stuff. We do have guests in here right now though, so I can't take you inside. I've been trying to pick at this new workshop build. I should have part two of that series up soon but i'm trying to finish the roof once i finish the roof then i'll have enough content for part two so you're gonna have to wait for that but that's okay right we have a rustic drive shed down here this is where i keep all the equipment you know like my log splitter and the tractor and a whole bunch of extra wood that i have and things like that and it comes in handy really i love the look of it it's nice and rustic Hopefully you guys enjoyed the little tour in the wind and storm today. Sorry about that. Life goes on though. Anyways, I'm going to put a video up on the screen if you're new and you haven't watched it. Last fall, it's a long video, so flip it up on your TV, sit back and relax. And it's basically a chaptered story of all what's happening on the property. And it's very scenic, very beautiful, and hopefully it may relax you a bit and put you in a good mood. Because when I watch it, it relaxes me. Anyways, thanks for watching. You guys take care.